नमस्कार इन सेशन थर्टी टू वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट इंटरनेशनल बॉन्ड मार्केट हियर वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द यूरो बॉन्ड देन यू विल डिस्कस अबाउट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ फॉरन बॉन्ड्स वील ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द सोवरेन बॉन्ड्स एंड बॉन्ड्स वट द रेटिंग ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल बॉन्ड्स while discussing about bond market i have mentioned earlier that bond is one of the way to raise capital from international market many companies they issue the capital either the either through the equity market or borrowing from the international bank through external commercial borrowing or they raise capital capital through bond by issuing foreign bonds purchased by either institutional investor or individual investor through the company raise capital from international market then while the international bond market is very old however bond market are the source of capital very recently developed the development of bond market depends upon the development of international financial market the listing requirements the taxation principle the rating ratings and investor appetite to purchase this bond all these are primary factors upon which the development of bond market depends while discussing about the bond market we will also outline various recently changes rules regulations regarding different kind of bonds issued in different parts of the world we will confine ourselves this way discussing about major aspect of bond market and while discussing the bonds market we will also discuss in indian context which are which are the bond issued recently what are what is uh, what are how much capital different companies have raised through the bond market and what is the position of bond market at present in indian context let us go to the bond market description side as i mentioned earlier bond market is international bond market generally categorized into two different part one part is called the foreign bonds another part is called euro bond that there is a minute level differences that there between euro bond and foreign bonds in case of euro bond a foreign company issue a bond denominated in a currency which is not the home currency of investor the bond would be known as euro bond here the foreign company issuing the bond denominated in foreign currency which is not the home currency of the company investors the bond would be known as the euro bond for example a us company issues a bond raise capital in japan japan denominated in us bond, us dollar this would be a euro bond yes us company the company us company means he has to raise bond in us dollar but he is not raising the bond the company is not raising the bond in us market rather than raising the bond in japanese market but not in japanese currency but in us dollar currency so it will be known as a euro bond similarly if the company issues a bond in pound sterling in japan market it will be a euro it, it may it will be euro sterling bond because pound sterling bond pound sterling is a currency raised by the us company in japanese market so it will be euro sterling bond similarly a us company raised bond in us dollar in japanese market it will be a euro dollar bond similarly indian company issue a bond in us market then it us market then it will be euro dollar bond 
you can call it. So, however, bond market euro bond market and foreign bond uh, euro, euro bond market though it is the nomenclature wise euro bond, but in general it is a foreign bond market. But in case of foreign bond market, the foreign company issued bond denominated in currency of the issued country is known as foreign bond. An US company issues a bond and raises capital in Japanese market in Japanese yen, it is an example of foreign bond. Because here US company that is company in US, he raised that company raising bond in Japanese market in Japanese currency yen, it is a foreign bond. Similarly, an Indian company raised bond in pound sterling in, in London market, it will be a foreign bond, a foreign bond because the currency remains the same as a London market currency, particularly the currency of euro or pound sterling, it will be a foreign bond. So, foreign bond and euro bond, the two different kinds of bond, nomenclature wise, minor, develop, minor level difference are there, but in actual sense, there is no difference. All are denominated in foreign currency and these are foreign bonds. When you discuss about a foreign bond, the issuer is, is from a foreign country, so it is a foreign bond. Euro bond market was primarily developed because in because there was heavy amount of taxes in 1960 early 1960 70 in US market. So, US invest US companies were not raising bond from US market rather than the raising bond from other market other than US and because of tax differences. So, in 1960 and early 70 euro bond market developed primarily because there was heavy taxation in US and a company in, in US market US dollar denominated, denominated currency they are raising bond from foreign country. Some company also issued what is called global bond. Global bonds means in a global bond, the issuer of issuer offers the bond not in one country, not to a particular sector of the investor, but many country at the same time. So, in a global bond, it is also in the form of a foreign bond, maybe in the form of a euro bond, but not confined to one country rather than spread over to many country at the same time. Normally, these bonds are denominated in multiple currency also because it is not confined to one currency, may be multiple currency and many companies are issuing multiple currency bond in a global on global basis, because this bond they wanted to raise current wanted to raise different kind different amounts and in different currency. So, they issue the global bond in different part of the country, different part of the world. If you see the bond market further, the bonds are normally issued by a large multinational company, because this company have the uh, they have the liability, they have the asset denominated in, denominated in different currency. So, they were issuing current uh, uh, different kinds of bond in different currency all part of the world and they wanted to raise capital as lowest possible cost and the overall cost of capital they want to reduce at the same time they want to reduce the currency risk, because if the currencies liability depend uh, are, are uh, in one currency, liability of the company in one currency it may create some kind of offable, some kind of risk. They want to spread the risk having different kind of currency, because their assets also in different currency. So, their liability also in different currency. So, they can be in a position to miss reduce the mismatches in currency asset currency currency wise asset liability and currency wise risk and because of this reason many translational company or multinational company they were issuing they have been issuing bond in different currency and different parts of the international market there are some kinds of bond which is issued by the country country which is called sovereign bond different country also issued foreign bond they are known as sovereign bond, but these are not government bond. Government bonds are issued in domestic country, domestic uh, uh, 
uh, within the country itself, but sovereign bonds are issued by the country for in a, uh, in, a in a in a currency other than domestic currency in different part of the world to raise money or uh, for international development aspect, they raise money from the different part of the country. These are called foreign bonds. Foreign bonds are different than the government bonds. So, we will be discussing in detail about the sovereign bonds separately. If you see the euro bond and foreign bond, these are different type, different names, different nomenclature available in the market. Foreign bonds, bonds, foreign bonds are issued in different names. If you there are uh, names which are most uh, confined to the uh, country specific rather than any international aspect of the naming culture, naming nomenclature, because they are confined to different country, different market segments of market, international market. So, because of this reason they got their name in different format. If you see there are bonds called Yankee bonds, these bond, the foreign bonds sold in US known as Yankee bond. Similarly, foreign bonds sold in Japan, these are they are known as samurai bonds. Similarly, foreign bonds sold in UK bulldog bond. Similarly, if a foreign bonds sold in Spain matador bonds, the maples bond these are foreign bonds sold in Canada. There may be some bonds are sold in Australia, New Zealand side they are known as kangaroo bonds. So, these are the different kinds of bond issued different part of the international market and they raise they got their name from the uh, from different country profiles, different country uh, naming aspect. So, they these are the bonds uh, most pop popularly know sold uh, bought and sold in international market. The Yankee bonds, samurai bonds and the kangaroo bonds are more uh, recently developed bonds market and these are more uh, purchase and buys and so, uh, trading in the different part of the international market at present and samurai bonds is very low risk uh, low cost bond available in international market. Similarly, Yankee bonds also is a dollar denominated bonds available in, in, in US market. So, if you go to the bond type there are different kinds of bonds also there. So, all these bonds need to be need to be raised issued and also register as per the guideline of international market, because bonds are compulsorily rated uh, and these are bonds are generally traded in international market. So, need to be listed in international stock market. If you see the bonds all foreign bonds have to be registered and have to abide by the rules and regulation of foreign current foreign country where these bonds are issued. So, all foreign bonds are also rated by rating agency and these bond if they issued from Yankee bond issued from US need to be abided by security exchange commission of US. Similarly, the bonds are issued from Australian market that is called kangaroo bond need to be registered as per the Australian regulation practices. So, all these bonds are issued and rated by uh, rating agency and they are also listed and traded as per the guideline of the respective country where they are they were issued. If you see the among the foreign bonds market the Yankee bond and samurai bonds market attract the maximum number of issue, issuance. And in early part of 2010, there has been lots of activity in samurai bond market. This because the samurai bond market is one of the lowest, uh, what is called uh, lowest cost or lowest interest rate coupon rate bonds available in market. So many companies were issuing the samurai bonds, samurai bond to get benefit from this lowest possible cost and lowest possible coupon rate. Among these bonds, the Yankee and Samurai bond are most popularly traded, uh, issued and traded in international market. Similarly, Euro bonds are not governed by any specific country rules regulation. So, most of the Euro bonds are issued in Western European country 
middle east and asian country because rules regulation side these bonds are no such uh, little bit what is called relaxed in nature because of this reason many middle east asian country european country they generally issued what is called this euro bond because this bond can be uh, is not confined to or not governed by any co any country specific rules regulation this can be issued by many countries and this, this most popularly issued from the uh, eastern european side middle east side and asian countries euro bond you can you, you can discuss about more about euro bond euro bond may not be rated because there is no compulsory rating for the euro bond so in the issuers of the euro bond generally reputed companies are issuing the euro bond so to attract the investor because this bond may not be rated and issued by most popular company company having high valuation side high reputation side so investor without uh, rating of this bond also purchase because they know that this companies are good in nature similarly with the relative good rating euro bonds market has fairly legend number of default if you see the recent default as per the because of this global financial crisis euro bond market euro bonds have many euro bonds have been defaulted recently because this bond despite being rated despite being issued by a good company the companies have not performed well recently because of global crisis and many such bond many such bond early because of recession early 2008 many such euro bond has been defaulted if you go to further the features of bond if you see the as we know from the bond market know from the fixed income security market security side the bonds are generally in the form of fixed coupon bond and floating or variable coupon bond so then the many international bonds are variable coupon bonds because it is very difficult the bonds are long dated security and very difficult to predict the coupon for more than 5 7 year 10 years bond so variable coupon bond or floating coupon bonds are mostly traded mostly issued by many invest many company in recent years what are the difference between fixed coupon bond and variable coupon bond fixed coupon bonds as you know the coupon or the interest rate re remain constant coupon remain constant till the maturity of the bond fixed coupon bonds are normally normally associated with shorter duration bond shorter duration bond because you know a issuer is issuer of a bond cannot very difficult for the for its for its part to fix the coupon for a longer period because we do not know what will be the interest rate cycle after 4 5 years so beyond 5 years bond generally issued on floating coupon basis or float or, or variable coupon basis but fixed coupon bond with generally short duration bond issued by a different company fluctuation of interest rate may not uh, men generally do not have effect on fixed coupon bond and because of this reason they are more attracted by the investor such bonds such such bond primarily the fixed coupon bond normally come with a call or put provision because call option or put or put option generally is to generally generally exercised by the issuer of the bond and they generally provide this kind of clause clauses in while issuing the bond in case of floating coupon bonds the interest rate is pegged to some benchmark rate because this bond benchmark rate is still which floating an interest rate or the coupon is linked to this benchmark rate benchmark rate is a market determined interest rate and as per the uh, economic scenario inflation opportunity cost recession development of the economy the benchmark rate fluctuate when the benchmark rate fluctuate the interest or the coupon payment back to the benchmark rate also fluctuate and most popular benchmark rate at if you see at present is the libor rate depending on the movement of the benchmark rate the coupon rate varies from period to period and many such bonds may at present 
you should add either LIBOR based coupon rate or the LIBOR, LIBOR, uh, LIBOR as a benchmark rate for the coupon payment. To protect the extreme fluctuation within the benchmark rate, there is a fixed, fixed and floor, uh, uh, there is a com company generally fix what is called a floor limit, a cap limit, because they do not want the neither the investor nor the issuer of the bond should, uh, should be uh, what is called uh, face any kind of problem with the bench with the, with the fluctuation of the benchmark rate. Excessive fluctuation both negative side and positive side should not affect the issuer of the bond or the investor of the purchaser of the bond and for this reason generally benchmark rate have a thick, uh, generally have a floor and cap limit. If the LIBOR increases or decreases cap rate and floor rate protect the investor, protect the purchaser of the bond and because of this reason despite the floating coupon rate or pegged to benchmark rate the and benchmark rate itself fluctuate there is a excessive fluctuation or uh, either side of the rate generally arrested or control by fixing a cap limit, fixing a floor, floor limit for the floating rate coupon payment. And uh, at present many, many bonds um, almost 90 percent of the bonds are being issued on floating coupon basis rather than fixed coupon basis. And if you go further regarding the features of the bond, there are many kinds of bonds available what is called zero coupon bond, convertible bond, dual currency bond, these are the associated with the features of the bond. In case of zero coupon bond as you know, as we know that zero coupon means there is no coupon payment on the bond and the bonds are sold on the basis of what is called a discount rate, a discount these are called discounted bond. Suppose a bond with a 100 dollars with a 10 percent coupon payment for 5 years will be sold as what is called, what is called a 9, 900. 900 dollars because discounted to face value the discount rate bond will be purchased and principal payment will be 1000 dollar. So, in a zero coupon bond, bonds are issued at discount to the face value and when the investor sell this bond or, or at maturity they receive a higher amount. So, zero coupon bonds are discounted to face value and all discounted bonds are there, there is no coupon payment in between the maturity of the bond. In case of convertibility bond, convertible bond, bond a convertible bond get converted to company shares or ADR or JDR of the company. So, the could, in case of convertible bond there is a what is called a minimum time periods of holding and after the time periods over or maturity periods over the uh, the the bond will be converted to converted as per the agreement or so as per the market price of the company equity shares or ADR or JDR. So, in convertible bond there may not be any payment or repayment of principal may be there may be some arrangement of principal of coupon payment. In case of dual currency bond in a dual currency bond as you know the principals or coupon rate are denominated in more than one currency. The currency may be in the purchase of uh, the principal may be repaid uh, in the form of dollar, bond may be issued in the form of pound sterling. Similarly, coupon may be paid in the form of dollar, bond, bond may might have issued in pound sterling. The bond might have issued more than one currency also. Dual currency bonds are available in the market at present. The dual currency bond generally is to uh, for, uh, for the swapping of currency or swap uh, currency swap type of issued generally possible in case of dual currency bond. Company put together different bond features so as to attract different kind of investor. The company generally either go for a fixed coupon bond or a dual currency bond and convertible bond or a zero coupon bond depend or a floating coupon bond with a mix of uh, floor and cap. All these features the company put together in bond issue so as to attract investor so as to, uh, uh, for the purchase of the bond 
It depends upon the current economic situation, economic scenario, currency, mar mar currency market, international market, international financial market. By looking the market, looking at the economic scenario, different companies show different kind of burn for raising of capital from the international market. If you go further into the bond market, if you will be discussing, you can discuss about that what is called the comparative aspect or characteristic of bond issued. There are different, as I mentioned here, in a bond, there are different kind of characteristics are there. The characteristic in the form of maybe regulatory disclosure norm, issuing of rating purpose, maybe uh, what is called the um, uh, uh, different coupon payment, different way of coupon payment. It may be one currency of purchase, different uh, another currency payments will be there. Different features are there and different type of uh, risks are there within the different with the different kind of bonds. When you go for analyzing a comparative aspect of characteristic of bond, we should look and look into the following characteristic, particularly regulatory aspect. Regulatory aspect you can divide the market between uh, North America that is particularly US side and non US side and euro bond side. If you see the regulatory aspect, uh, regulatory aspect the North America side particularly the United States side the restriction or the regulation is stringent in nature. But in case of non US side particularly Latin American side Mexico the, there the specified agencies are there, specified rating uh, agencies are there rules regulation not so much stringent. But in case of euro bond side the minimum rate minimum regulatory requirements are there after that bond can be so easily. Disclosure norm in case of North America US side uh, the disclosure norm is very stringent, SEC guideline is very stringent. But in case the non US country the Latin American side the variable it is very from country to country it is not so stringent. But in case of euro market euro bond market the market regulation or the disclosure norms is as per the market practices and it is not it is relaxed in as compared to the North America or US side. But if you show as rating side the rating cost is quite high the rating is very stringent and highly require necessary or compulsory in case of North America on the US, US side. It is usually not so much requirement are not there in case of what is called North America your uh, Latin American country, non US country. However, in e Euro market, Euro bond market a rating may not require or rating is not required uh, on the basis of the company specific. The companies are good, companies are already rated, there is no requirements of further rating. But issuing cost, cost is issuing of continental bond is highly costly and it is uh, nearly um, 0.75 to 1.25 percent of the issue size in case of North America and including US. It is up to 4 percent in non-US country because it, the um, non-US country um, it is not so specialized market is not there. So, rating uh, the issuing cost is very high. It is generally 2 to 3 percent in case of euro, bond, euro market euro bond side. And issuance the speed of issuance when the uh, when the bond issued uh, mobilization of capital which uh, the speed of issuance is moderate in case of US, uh, US and uh, North America side is variable in, in case of non-US non country Latin American country. In case of it is very fast bought and sold deal type very fast private placements are there in case of euro bond market. Restriction if you put restrictive clauses restrictions are there quite restrictive in case of um, uh, in case of restriction common restrictively quite restrictions are there in case of Latin American country but it is no, no restrictions are there in case of North America and, and US side and there is no such, such kind of restrictions are there, restrictive clauses are there in case of euro bond market. But there are many advantages, disadvantages are there, advantages like in case of North America, US, US side uh, is a large market, highly liquid market, standardized information available and uh, these are the advantages for their US and uh, US and North America side. In case of non-US Latin American country side local it is a localized market 
the feasibility there local markets uh, and depends upon the market to market differences are there. In case of euro bond market uh, the interest rate is low, the bonds are bearer bonds are available, no, there is no withholding taxes, the double taxation withholding taxations are not there. Uh, currency a diversified currency you can get currency of uh, e, e pound sterling euro you can get the currency of what is called um, uh, Canadian dollar you can get the currency of what is called Australian dollar you can get the currency of what is called South African dollar you can get the currency of French franc Japanese Japanese yen market. So, the euro bond market is highly diversifiable, diversifiable and currency wise also highly diversified. Then question is what are the disadvantages are there in different parts of the market. If you see the North American US side this disadvantage is quite high, disadvantage in the form of highly disclosure norms, the disclosure norm is highly costly, the reporting, reporting tax authorities are there, a report, regular reporting may will be there, then disclosure norms in the form of accounting standards also there, but in case of non, non US country is a market is very small the liquidity is very low liquidity, there is tax culture, tax is different different parts, but in case of euro market uh, despite being low information is available, everything is available, withholding taxes are not there, there are disadvantages are, but there are many disadvantages are there particularly the less liquid market. So, if you see in the entire North America that is uh, U, including US, the non US country, then euro bond market is all different part of this market have different advantages, these disadvantages are there and particularly that the markets are developed in Euro, Euro bond market, market is developed in case of North America and US market. And non US market, market is highly segmented, less liquid, high, high, high cost, restrictions are there, market is in, firm, in uh, what is called impure market and uh, not viable to uh, for issuing of bonds. The bonds are being issued in, a, in the form of Yankee bond, in the form of an Euro bond market and both are both are in the North America US side and also in Euro bond side. So, these are the characteristic of market as compared to direction side as compared to uh, issuing cost, regulatory disclosure norms, uh, what is called rating side and liquidity side, taxation side, these are the some kind of what is called I mentioned here the advantage disadvantages side of different parts of international market. When you go further to the bond market, if you see the recent year the bond market issued in Indian kind, Indian companies have issued different kinds of bonds recently. Indian bond market though it was quite uh, active after in the after liberalization so after liberalization measure of 1992-93 onwards, however there are some kinds of bond issued prior to that prior to that and this prior to bond market uh, prior to liberalization the bonds were primarily government sovereign bonds in nature issued by a different kind of public sector undertaking. And after liberalization many companies many com private companies have issued bond these are the bond like reliance industry issue 95, uh, 95 uh, issue year 95 10 years bond 150 million dollar uh, US dollar they have raised with a coupon rate of 8.15 8 8 US dollar. Similarly, Reliance company also in a issued another bond in 97 for the what is called um, 214 million uh, money they raised from the market. Similarly, ICICI, ICICI Bank Limited they issue another in a one bond in 1997 they raised 150 million bond with a coupon payment of 7.55 percentage. Similarly, telco company also issue a bond 97, 200 million they raise in a dollar term and the, the coupon is variable in nature and the floating coupon linked to the LIBOR plus 200 basis point. Reliance industry further issue another bond in 97 and uh, these bonds are uh, almost a perpetual bond of 100 years bond, what is called 100 years bond first time they issued and with a raise capital of 100 million US dollar. And similarly, Tata Electric 97 issue bond 150 million bond with a coupon payment of 7.88 percent in US dollar term. Similarly, Tata Electric also issue another bond in 97 with a 150 million another bond they raise money with a coupon payment of 8.50 percentage in dollar term. 
So, these are the recently bond issued by the limited companies in Indian context. But if you see Indian company, Indian bond market, international bond aspect of Indian companies, Indian companies have primarily issued Yankee bonds in the denominated in dollar US dollar. Around 6 companies have issued recently bond Yankee bond. Reliance company is the first company to issue Yankee bond in 1995. Then Reliance Industry Limited also second Yankee bond 97 they issue. The first they issued a bond of what is called 100 years bond in Yankee followed by second issue of 240 million US dollar for 30 years bond. Fixed rate Yankee bond issued by with a fixed coupon and maturity period more than 10 years. Floating rate bonds are also issued back generally back to LIBOR in India many Indian companies have issued the floating rate bond, but the benchmark is a LIBOR with a 150-200 basis point more than the LIBOR requirement. So, but do uh, Euro bond market also quite low many companies have issued Euro, Euro, Euro issue they have done and uh, 96 to 9 uh, this company particularly IDBI bank, ONGC, SBI, ID, um, IDBI bank again, ONGC again they issue Euro bond, Euro bonds most probably most probably popularly linked to the US dollar market and their age bond, uh, their age money uh, Euro, uh, US dollar with variable coupon, fixed coupon depending upon the requirements. So, there are some kinds of bond like IDBI in June 89, they issue 100 million bond. Similarly, ONGC in December 1988, they issue 120 million bond. Similarly, SBI also issued in June, June 1988, 150 million yen. Similarly, many other companies have issued Euro bond market and tap, uh, tap the Euro bond market and raise capital. So, but if you go to the beyond that, the Euro issue post 91, that is whatever you use post 91, the many companies have issue after the 91 the economic liberalization. Uh, this allow them to because the many economic clauses, uh, that is external commercial borrowing clauses have relaxed uh, after 91 economic reform period. Many companies have issue Euro issue after 1991, like company like Isar, Isar Gujarat, Reliance Industry, Jindal Power, um, then your sterilite industry, Bharat Forge, Tisco, uh, ICICI Bank, and then you have Reliance Petrochemical, the Global Telefilm, then Balrav, um, then uh, your ICICI Bank also, and also IPCL. In, uh, they have issued the, what is called Euro issue after 1991 with variable coupon payment and also uh, there are maybe uh, some kind of uh, what is called convertible bond also they have issued convertible in the form of GDR, convertible in the form of ADR with a mixed club features they issue the bond Euro, Euro bond in different market of the world. If you see the Indian companies, uh, it is the Euro bond international market even before the liberalization also. The many publishers are undertaking, uh, they issue sovereign bond sovereign with a sovereign guarantee in Euro bond market prior to liberalization. And these bonds uh, had a fixed coupon, fixed maturity without having any convertible class. After 92 economic reform, uh, private companies have issued uh, Euro, bond, uh, Euro bonds and they tap the Euro market to get capital in the form of US dollar and also bearing few fish coupon maximum coup maximum company uh, many companies have issued what is called variable coupon with a maturity of more than 10 years. Many such bonds are convertible clauses also there and these bonds are floating rate bond linked to either LIBOR or LIBOR or any kind of benchmark rate. However, many such bonds also have a convertible clause in the form of uh, domestic share in the form of JDR, in the form of ADR issued. This indicates that Indian company, Indian uh, have, have appetite to absorb the foreign currency borrowing, foreign currency, um, uh, international foreign currency market to raise capital. But uh, when you when you go beyond this, beyond that, uh, the other company in the world, Indian company uh, issuing of bonds is very limited in nature compared to other country in the world. Because many other country the bond issues in international market is very frequent and it is a day to day affairs in bond market. 
our Indian contest is not so frequent and the appetite though it is there the cost is very high the cost in the form of coupon payment the cost in the form of issuing cost the cost in the form of get rated from the rating agency the cost in the form of surrendering the some kind of some kind of what is called uh, uh, governance aspect and cost in the form of regulatory aspect is quite high and issuing of international bond by a domestic company is no it is a rare feature it is a rare uh, not uh, not happening every day in indian financial system but however there are redemption prices also there because many company they issue uh, foreign currency borrowing um, uh, and linked to the convertibility and they issue the foreign currency bond when the underlying stock were very high price and uh, when the um, an indian company when the peg the foreign currency borrowing foreign currency bond conversion price at a very high price but when redemption arise the foreign the equity market was not performing well so the holder of this bond they didn't exercise the convertibility call clause rather than they go they had they have gone for redemption redemption as a as a decided price so this lead to redemption pressure on company and they now at present many companies when they issue 10 15 years before convertible bond now they are facing the redemption pressure and this this has affected their bottom line and so while uh, defining the redemption uh, redemption uh, redemption or in case of convertible convertible bond we should be very careful while issuing the convertible bond convertible at a high price may lead to redemption pressure which may affect the bottom line of the company after 10 15 years after the maturity of the bond so it will be quite difficult to understand the uh, convertible clause features and uh, while uh, deciding about the convertible feature this company should be careful in nature on by issuing a long term bond with a convertible features now but if you see the floating rate notes there are another kinds of bond available in the market what is called floating rate notes or debenture you should with a variable coupon peg to benchmark rate many frn what is called floating rate notes are uh, have been issued by indian company in us dollar term and also peg to liber uh, liber liber us liber and us dollar then like is are still 94 they 1994 they issued 250 million us dollar liber plus 2.65% so here liber is the benchmark rate and maturity of the bond was in 1999 arvin mill 94 they issue 125 million uh, with a what is uh, uh, 12 years bond uh, 12 years bond they issue spike 1996 is 220 million liber plus 2.5 percent and uh, maturity was 2003 icic say bank issue 2007 and then 500 billion million us dollar liber plus 0.54 percent the maturity was 2010 similarly sbi bank state bank of india is 2007 300 million us dollar with liber plus 0.38 percent and it was um, maturity was 2012 these are floating rate notes available in the market in the form of bonds and debenture issued by variable coupon are a benchmark for benchmark coupon benchmark plus variable parts and these co- companies have been issued this very recently in a foreign market as if a floating rate notes market similarly if you see there are car sbi issue many kind of current currency bond what is called indian millennium bond resurgent indian bond and also india development bond idb bond and these bonds were issued by the sbi in uh, in different three different currency particularly us dollar and uh, also pound sterling and also pound sterling us dollar and also also some uh, some of the issue in variable other variable currency they issued and if you see the imd that is indian millennium bond uh, it was a bond in the type currency was us dollar the sbi raise 101 and sbi raise was 1.6 billion billion us dollar and coupon payment was fixed at 7.75 percentage the maturity period was 5 year and many maximum part of the bond purchased by nri community and forex risk whatever the risk was they are absorbed by the rbi 
And similarly, SBI also issued one another bond in 98, 1998, what is called resurgent Indian bond. It was a bond, it, is, it was issued in pound sterling in US dollar, also in Deutsche Mark. And SBI mobilized nearly 4.23 billion US dollar and the, it was in variable uh, coupon linked to the uh, linked to different currency and the coupon payment was in case of Deutsche Mark it was 6.25, in case of US dollar it was 7.75, in case of pound sterling it was 8 percent, maturity was 5, 5, 5 year and uh, significant part of NRI, NRI community they purchased the bond. In the forex risk, whatever the risk was there because of foreign exchange, it was observed by the central government and the state bank of India. Similarly, SBI issued another bond in, in 2000, what is called Millennium Indian Bond, Millennium Indian Bond, in that is called India Millennium Bond IMD, MID, that is what issued in 2000, October 2000. It was not a bond, rather than it is a certificate of deposit and it was issued in pound sterling, euro and US dollar. And uh, SBI mobilized nearly um, what is called 5.5 billion, 5.5 billion US dollar from the market. The coupon was fixed in case of dollar it was 8.5, in case of pound sterling it was 7.85, in case of euro it was 6.85. And the certificate deposit maturity period was 5 years and significant part of the NRA community they invested in this bond and there is whatever the foreign, foreign currency risk was there, it was captured by the central government and the SBI. If you go beyond this, the sovereign bonds are available in the market, this bond, sovereign bond generally issued by the country denominated in foreign currency, these are not, these are not govern, government bond, government bonds are issued in domestic currency by the country government, but sovereign bond issued by the country government in foreign currency. All these bonds are purchased, guaranteed by the government, central government. In the country, so, uh, since it is a sovereign bond, default is almost zero. And this bond generally uh, purchased by different financial institutions, governments of other country. And this bond generally used, uh, generally used by government for their developmental activity. These bonds are generally rated, may not be rated, and all sovereign bonds at present are not rated. Euro money undertake a biannual publish, uh, publish a own rating of the, this bond country. On the basis of sovereign, sovereign rating, this bond, uh, coupon payment, maturity, purchase, purchase activity depends upon. Euro money, if you see every year, they, uh, they publish what is called the rating of the uh, country and the rating on the basis of rating of the country, sovereign bond appetite will be there in the market. If you see the international rating, what is called sovereign rating, there are different kind of parameters are there for sovereign rating. The sovereign rating at present uh, can be divided into t four or five uh, heading. If you, the, what are the factors that govern the euro, euro, euro money rating criteria? Euro money rating criteria primarily depends upon what is called political risks. The political risks have a different parameters, the parameter like government stability, regulatory environment non-payment of loans, dividend, interest, non-repatriation of capital, then corruption, perception in the country, all these take, take care of the political risks. That is another part of the sovereign rating criteria is called economic performance. Within the economic performance, the banking sector regulations, risks risk and stability, monetary sector stability, currency stability, current account, def, current account deficit, unemployment, GNP growth, these are coming on the, under the head of the economic performance. Similarly, we have what is called uh, access to bank finance that is called capital market access. Then also we have what is called debt to debt in default or rescheduled debt. These are also parameters like ratio of debt, rescheduled debt, ratio world banks and global development finance figure also a couple of come over here. That indicators of the, com, 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 of the country like total debt to stock, uh, total debt as a percentage of GNP, debt service to export, current account balance to GNP. So, all these things part of the debt indicator. Then really also have a credit in, credit in rating side, normally issued by ICRA or the Fitch rating, Modi, Standard and Poor's. These are the rating agency issue uh, rating of the, uh, of the current country. All these rating agency rating also figure in while deciding about sovereign rate, sovereign rating. So, 
sovereign rating generally per given by the euro money every year basis biannually twice in a year and this year uh, and this uh, they take into account what is what we discuss about political risks, economic performance, then we uh, access to uh, debt market, uh, debt indicators, uh, rating uh, credit rating side all these parameters they take into account while deciding about the sovereign rating or sovereign debt crisis. With this let me close here the references of for here will be the Ferguson and 2006 political risks in international bond market. You can go through this and you will come to know about the history of the bond market in, in bond market at world level. Similarly, I have given some kind of um, web page link here the issue cost in euro bond market effect of market integration. Then you can also go through this uh, web page and see different kind of euro issue and their impact cost. The model question for you, the model question here what are the main differences between euro bond, euro and foreign bonds? You discuss about what are the features of euro bond, what are the features of foreign bonds. Similarly, second question here while ex, uh, explain why many Indian company have faced serious trouble over foreign currency convertible bond in recent year. Here you can discuss, you can discuss here many for after the economic liberalization many foreign many companies Indian companies have issued foreign currency convertible bond. They um, link the foreign currency convertible bond price to the share market price which was, which was ruling that time very high. And recently share market price is not performing well many such many issuers uh, many purchaser of this bond they uh, they want redemption from this rather than converting the uh, bond into uh, ordinary equity share or JDR EDR and since they are con uh, they, are, they want the redemption they want the principal repayment. So, it is become a pressure on the car company because they have not developed the sinking fund for the bond repayment and because of this redemption pressure has created problem for the company domestic Indian company who have issued. 10, 10 years, 7, 8 years, 10 years before a foreign currency convertible bond at present. As per the your understanding that question you can discuss as per your understanding what aspects should be considered for rating of companies, companies bond issuance, how it will be different from rating national government and sovereign rating. Here you discuss what are the, what are the um, factors should be considered for rating of a company and how it is different from the sovereign rating of the sovereign rating or national government rating and what way it differ from them. You can discuss, you can discuss here in case of company rating with the company performance, company uh, board of governor, company management, company balance sheet, uh, company profitability or company way of doing business and company uh, performance in the share market company performance in the bond market, company performance in the market uh, in the product development, company performance in R and D activity, company own strength in weaknesses everything we fact by part of the uh, company rating side. While in case of sovereign rating generally governments government come over here government performance performance of the government debt indicator, government, government current account convertibility indicator, current account deficit indicator, country performance, current all this part or the company uh, all this part will be the part of the sovereign rating. Sovereign rating will do when it is low it is affect the rating of the uh, individual company within the country. Sovereign rating is high it may not affect may not have any positive impact on the company's rating. However, negative sovereign rating definitely affect uh, a company rating profile all these things part of the your third question answering. Thank you.